One of the quickest ways to get better in PvP might be at your fingertips. Literally. Yeah, there's a reason why every rank 1 player uses macros. Well, because they work. Unfortunately, there's a lot of confusion about what macros are actually helpful, and some players make the mistake of making ones that are useless or even way too complicated. And it's no wonder that our Discord is full of people asking questions on this topic. Luckily for you, we will simplify the macro making process and make things easy for you to understand. We will start with the basics and gradually build towards the more advanced macros that every pro player uses. So get ready to log in and open up the macro panel to get started. And while this guide will help you become a better player, learning how to make a few macros won't instantly carry you to Gladiator. If you really want to unlock your true potential, the class courses at skillcap.com are the number one place to get started. There, you can make your macros matter by learning damage rotations, cooldown management, and min-maxing tips that the best PvPers use to dominate in Arena. Joining Skillcapped will give you access to premium features in our Discord server, including access to our Ask a Pro channel where you can get the personalized PvP help you need. With a rating gain guarantee, you have literally nothing to lose. Visit the link below to get started with an exclusive discount offer. Let's kick things off with some macro basics. Even if you're an experienced player, you still could learn something new in this section. The most basic macro command is the slash cast function, which as you might have guessed, will cast a spell when used. For instance, when putting slash cast frostbolt in a macro, it will cast, well, frostbolt. Pretty straightforward and most of you probably knew this. By default though, this macro will not have a tooltip, which is why the show tooltip command is inserted before the slash cast line, so the spell information, including its cooldown, if it has one, will be displayed on the macro icon. You can even show the tooltip of a completely different ability by using the same command, but with a different spell name. Here, we will put show tooltip icy veins in a macro with slash cast frostbolt, and by doing so, the macro will display the cooldown of icy veins, but when pressed, will cast frostbolt. This is why you sometimes see streamers with multiple cooldown icons of the same spell on their bars. It's not because they have multiple binds for the same ability, but instead, by placing the show tooltip command before other spells that don't have cooldowns or strict resource requirements, they can see more useful information at a quick glance. A rogue, for instance, probably doesn't need to see the tooltip for some of their finishers and instead could make a macro that uses eviscerate, but can also be used to track a major cooldown at the same time. This isn't 100% necessary, but is definitely one way to optimize your UI to only display the most relevant information. Bear in mind though that you should only use show tooltip to track major cooldowns by attaching the line to macros of minor spells. For instance, you wouldn't want to show the tooltip for icy veins in a macro that uses ice block since both are major cooldowns. In any case, the main function of the majority of your macros will be to cast spells. By default though, these spells will only be used on your current target if they are targeted abilities, so what do you do if you want to cast a spell on someone else? For that, we will need to add some targeting commands, and be sure to pay attention because this is the most useful part of macro making. The user interface is full of interactable frames. Using macros, you can cast spells on any unit frame regardless of your current target. This means you can save a little bit of time by not needing to manually change targets before using quick reactive spells. Take this moment for instance, our rogue is targeting the enemy priest while having the boomkin on focus. Instead of needing to swap targets to interrupt the druid cyclone, a simple macro can be used in order to kick the focus target, making gameplay much faster. These focus macros are incredibly important for any class, including DPS and healers, and generally work best with reactive spells like interrupts or dispels, or any form of targeted CC like polymorph, and simply require you to add an at focus command in brackets before the spell name. You can use focus macros on any spell that requires a target, including damage abilities, though this isn't really necessary and for the most part is just a small mind game for the enemy team. If you wanted to make focus macros for damage spells, they would be most effective with huge damaging ranged abilities like chaos bolt, lava burst, or even aimed shot. Minor damaging abilities and melee attacks generally don't benefit at all from focus macros. In any case, using focus macros allows you to play fast, but there is one way to play even faster. Let's back up. Say you're playing an RMP mirror as a mage. You want to focus the enemy priest for CC, but might also need to quickly counterspell the mage while attacking the rogue. How do you do all this? Well, luckily we can use macros to cast spells on specific arena frames through arena 123 commands. So instead of putting at focus in front of our spells, we can simply type at arena 123 having three unique binds for each unit frame. 
If you are a ranged DPS, this is incredibly important for interrupts, since typically you will have the ability to interact with anyone on the enemy team at all times. If you have a ranged CC, then Arena 123 can also make your gameplay more fluid, once again allowing you to CC whoever you want instantly, regardless of who you are targeting. Most melee DPS, on the other hand, typically don't need Arena 123 macros for interrupts, since most kicks are limited to melee range. The exception to this rule is obviously Enhancement Shaman for Wind Shear, and to some degree Death Knight, especially with Strangulate. Because they are all ranged interrupts, they will benefit from Arena 123. There are a few use cases for Arena 123 CC macros as a melee DPS, but again, range is the main limiting factor. That being said, a Ret Paladin might want Repentance Arena macros, since it has a long range and needs to be used quickly in some cases, but they might benefit less from Hammer of Justice Arena macros, since its range is quite limited, meaning is less in demand. Additionally, Rogues could use Arena Macros for Blind, as it is a ranged CC, but wouldn't want Arena 123 for Kidney Shot, since it is used almost exclusively on the current target. Anyway, everything we've talked about so far include harmful spells that you use on enemy targets, but what about using helpful spells for your party? Well, luckily, there are macros for that too, so let's cover the commands you can use for party members. Just like Arena 123, there are friendly frames that can be entered into macros for seamless ability usage. The primary ones that are useful for Arena include Party 1, Party 2, and one for your own player, which is simply called Player. By default, Party 1 will always be the highest frame in the Party Frame window, excluding yourself. Party 2 will always be directly below Party 1, once again excluding your own character. In order to create macros for each of these frames, simply insert an at party command directly before the spell, just like we did for Arena 123. Unless you are planning to play super serious 5v5 arena, you are generally safe simply making party 1-2 macros, and most players don't need to make macros for party 3 and 4, which only apply to 5-man groups. Now, you might be wondering, what types of spells should you macro with party frames? Well, obviously only helpful spells will work, but that doesn't mean making party 1-2 macros for every single helpful spell in your toolkit. Instead, we should follow the same principle as before, prioritizing party macros for snappy, reactive spells, especially ones that are classified as utility. For any class with a defensive dispel, like cleanse from paladins, dispel magic from priest, or even decurse from mage, party macros work great for quickly removing important debuffs from your teammates without needing to switch targets. DPS classes with instant cast off heals might also find party macros to be helpful for their healing spells since they won't sacrifice DPS by temporarily swapping targets to heal. Moreover, DPS classes with any important temporary party buff such as Roar of Sacrifice for Hunters, Tricks of the Trade for Rogues, Hand of Freedom from Rent Paladins, or even Intervene from Warriors and Hunters can also benefit from party macros for these spells for the same reason. With that said, healers should avoid macroing party 1-2 for their general healing spells since doing so could easily create keybinding bloat and make gameplay more awkward. We will give a workaround to this in a moment when we discuss targeting binds. But before we do, there is one more frame we should consider, your own frame. The at player function is the last major helpful unit frame worth making macros for. Now, by default, using a helpful spell while targeting an enemy player will simply use the spell on yourself, but say you're targeting a friendly player. Pressing the spell in this instance would use it on them, which would suck if it was a snappy reactive spell intended for yourself like Innervate, Roar of Sacrifice, Fear Ward, or even a simple Dispel. This is why making macros with at player are once again important for this category of spell. Honestly, there are very limited use cases for player macros and not every class needs them, but if you have an important helpful spell and need to optimize your globals, these player macros are immensely helpful and will minimize gameplay errors. At its core, this should be the basic principle behind any macro, to simply minimize mistakes while making your gameplay much faster. But remember, having good macros alone can only take you so far. And if you really want to make your gameplay as optimal as possible, check out our class courses at skillcap.com. There you will learn how to perfect your rotation deal maximum damage, and top the healing meters. And with our play style courses, you can make your macros matter even more as you learn how to optimize your utility inside of Arena. Joining now will get you instant access to both Classic and Retail, which includes Dragonflight on its release. With a money-back guarantee, that is huge value for achieving your goals no matter what expansion you play, so visit the link below to get started with an exclusive discount offer. And with that in mind, let's move on to how you can make your macro game even stronger by making sure you have great targeting keybinds. So by now it should be clear that having focus Arena 123, Party 12, and player macros are all super important, but their value really depends on your role. 
As a DPS, your priority will be doing damage, of course, which means focus macros in Arena 1, 2, 3 are more vital than party macros, generally speaking. And remember, focus macros are useful for every DPS class since they are typically used for highly reactive spells like interrupts and CCs. This means as a DPS, you should prioritize making binds for focus arena 1, 2, and 3, which you can achieve through macros. Then, making macros to target arena 1, 2, 3 are next in line of importance, especially for ranged DPS since you can target swap more easily. And finally, as a DPS, you might want to consider making party 1, 2, and target self keybinds, though these matter significantly less, especially as a non-hybrid. For healers, the order is a bit different. Having efficient binds for targeting your party members and yourself is the most important, since you interact with friendly units the most. This is followed by Focus Arena 1-2-3 binds, which are primarily used as a healer for keeping tabs on enemy players in order to CC or interrupt. And finally, the least important binds as a healer are Target Arena 1-2-3, since you typically don't spam offensive spells on enemy players in Arena. If you came to this video expecting macros to play the game for you, we have some bad news. They won't. And that is by design, since there is one big limitation to how macros can work. It's called the global cooldown. You cannot macro two spells together that are on the global cooldown and have both work with a single key press. For instance, slash cast Frostbolt followed by slash cast Ice Lance won't cast both spells back to back. What you can do, however, is combine a spell that is on the GCD with one that is off the GCD and have them both work together in a macro. For instance, as a rogue, you can macro Focus Shadow Step with Focus Kick, and on two presses, you can perform both. The same thing will work for warriors, making macros to change stances in order to intercept, spell reflect, or shield wall. And spells can even be combined with trinkets or things like rocket gloves to make abilities go off at the same time. A BM hunter, for instance, could macro their trinket with slash use and then slash cast bestial wrath. For us boomers, these were once called swifty one-shot macros since they allow you to get out multiple damage modifiers at one time. There is one way to use multiple abilities on the GCD with a single macro, and that is with the cast sequence function. But before you get too excited about this, we absolutely do not recommend this for rotational abilities. Instead, these typically work best with any sort of rotating buff, like mage armors or hunter aspects, and can be made by typing slash cast sequence, followed by two or more spells separated with commas. That way, as a hunter, for instance, you can tab between aspect of the viper and aspect of the dragon hawk with a single keybind. And to wrap things up, let's go over some miscellaneous and more advanced things you can do with macros in PvP. There are two separate commands, slash start attack and slash stop attack, which might be useful for different classes in different situations. Slash start attack is good for any physical damage dealer to start the auto attack. Sometimes it's possible for your auto attacks to suddenly stop if an enemy target uses a vanish ability or if you quickly swap targets. Putting slash start attack in some of your core rotational damage spells, make sure you will always be white hitting enemy targets in order to maximize damage. Slash stop attack on the other hand is useful for abilities where you don't want to be attacking the enemy target, which typically means things like gouge for rogues or scattershot for hunters since you absolutely do not want to risk an auto attack canceling their CC effect. Additionally, you definitely want to have slash stop casting macroed into any interrupt or into major defensive cooldowns that are on the GCD, most notably Ice Block or Divine Shield. This will ensure that you can use these abilities instantly by canceling any spellcast or channel. Some classes might also want to make cancel aura macros in order to remove certain buffs off themselves. Instead of manually clicking off buffs like Bladestorm or Ice Block, a simple slash cancel aura command can remove buffs automatically. This is especially important when playing as or with a paladin on your team, since enemy mages might look to spell steal important buffs like Hand of Protection or Avenging Wrath. You can also make different macros with help or harm commands, which will use one spell if the target is an enemy and a different spell if they are friendly. This isn't 100% necessary, but can be one way to free up some specific keybind space. Another way to save space is by introducing modifier keys directly into macros. You can add any of the core modifiers, Shift, Control, and Alt to change whatever spell is used depending on the modifier that is being pressed. Just make sure you don't have a separate bind with the modifier and the base key, or else it will prevent the macro from working. There are also a few other commands that can be used for any targeted spell, including at mouse over, which will cast the current spell on whatever frame your mouse is hovering over, which is great for things like turn evil or even for quickly stomping totems without needing to change targets. There is also at cursor, which will use any targeted AoE spell at the current location of the cursor, circumventing the need to manually click on the ground. Freezing Arrow, Blizzard, or Shadow Fury are just a few spells which can benefit from this. Next up, Druid specifically can add an exclamation point in front of shapeshift spells to quickly refresh the current form. 
slash cast exclamation point travel form will cast travel form on its first press, but any subsequent presses will instantly remove and reapply the same form in a process known as power shifting. Again, this is very niche, but useful to know as a druid. Finally, we have a few commands that are useful for any pet class. Slash pet attack can be useful to put in some, but perhaps not all rotational abilities depending on class. Mages typically want this in their damage abilities for their water elemental, but other permanent pet classes might want to keep a separate bind for pet attack so they can manually send their minions to enemy healers in order to stop drinks. You can also make conditional macros that will change spells depending on whether your pet is dead or alive. This macro, for instance, will summon the current pet if it is alive, but not out. Then use mend pet once it is out, or resurrect that pet in case it is dead. There are also a slew of class specific macros that we highly recommend, and they can be found in our starter courses, or even on our new articles page at skillcap.com. We work with the best so that you can get ahead of the competition faster than anyone. Visit the link below to learn more about our rating gain guarantee and get started with a special discount code. In any case, we hope you learned a lot today. Share your favorite macros in the comments below. As always, thank you all for watching. See you soon.